Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today. The air quality is still bad, but the games are so good. In particular, high expectations for this one as Mr. Yo, playing as the Gurjaras in blue, prepares to take on Sito, playing as the Spanish in red. Now while the players heard their hurtables, explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible. Let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today, the Gurjaras. A sieve that focuses on all of man's other four-legged best friends. I'm talking about horses, camels, and elephants. Their camels and elephants are created faster. All mounted units deal extra bonus damage. Progressive, by the way, all the way up to 40% extra bonus damage in Imperial. Their camel line units and elephant archers can be upgraded to make them much, much tankier with a huge boost to their melee armor. And their unique unit, their first unique unit, I should say, the Shravam Shrider is a super fast volatile cavalry unit that actually dodges enemy projectiles. Five enemy projectiles dodged for the base model, seven for the elite. Now, to support their ranged units against pesky annoying things like infantry, think pikemen, halberdiers, etc., the Gurjaras can field a second unique unit, the Chakram Thrower. This is an infantry unit that, with ranged melee attack who throws discs like Xena Warrior Princess, and just like her discs, every single one thrown mul damages multiple units if there are multiple <laughs> units to damage. Now, although their damage output is quite low, I think it's three for the base model, four for the elite. The pass through damage is actually 100 percent. And there is also a small attack bonus against infantry. Condottieri as well, but not expecting to see any Condottieri in this matchup. Now, in order for the Gurjaras to build a uh, to help them build a big military as quickly and as powerfully as possible they do start the game as you saw here with two extra berry bushes underneath the town center they can garrison their livestock take a look at the bottom left of your screen a super cool feature that automatically generates food for them let's take a look at the top left now 14 15 16 17 auto generates food and they can upgrade their entire military industrial complex so that every single military unit they have costs less food now on the other side of the arabian peninsula the desert we've got the spanish who seems to have lost control of the zebra for a quick second there sito a paramilitary civilization that man loves its gunpowder units their gunpowder units fire 18 percent faster and their unique unit the conquistador is a heavy hitting less accurate mounted hand cannoneer but with more hp and less range now, in order to defend their costly units on the field of battle the spanish can train missionaries which are basically mounted monks that can't pick up relics and do come with less range now before you think having less range is a massive disadvantage know that it may not necessarily be a problem since the spanish can upgrade both their monks and their missionaries to convert enemy units faster and by the way they can give a small plus one boost to the range of their missionaries if they research the inquisition technology now in order to support their military industrial complex, Spanish villagers build structures 30% faster. Their upgrades for blacksmith, rather in the blacksmith, cost no gold. And thanks to the penultimate patch, they receive 20 gold for every single technology that they research. So we'll take a look at the coffers on the top right of our screen. Does help defray the cost of loom, for example, which our Spaniard is researching right now. Looks like our Gurjara is the first to head up to feudal. Now, why did I call the Spanish a paramilitary civilization? Because they can upgrade every single one of their villagers to get 40 extra HP, plus two, plus two armor, and a massive plus six attack boost. By the way, when you combine that with the Sappers upgrade, it makes their villagers incredibly, um, inc just basically incredible at taking down buildings, castles, towers, even walls in the late game. By the way, Notice how the 50 gold went up to 70 once the loom upgrade was completed. That is a cool feature. Does help the Spanish get up nice and quickly. Uh, a bit more gold, a bit more early game pressure, perhaps. But for now, let's take a look. Sito has not yet discovered where Mr. Yo is. Mr. Yo has not discovered where Sito is. Looks like, looks like they're both kind of just skirting the edges of their base. Sito discovers a house. Mr. Yo discovers the primary gold. So now he knows Rather, both players know exactly where they need to go. Let's take a look at those bases. By the way, Sito looks like his base completely open. Primary gold, very exposed in the front here. Very open primary stone. 
a little bit secure in the back, but a little bit off campus might want to uh, wall off this portion of the map if he wants to go castle, rather quick castle. Spanish are uh, similar to the Portuguese, generally overly take a goat. Oh, he took a goat! Similar to the Portuguese in the sense that uh, generally the meta is rush your butt up to castle age and start getting your gunpowder units out. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very simple meta for the Spanish, although that being said, the Spanish military roster is pretty damn good. A pristine infantry line, a pristine cavalry line, a pristine monk line. Their defensive structures are amazing. So overall, a very heavy hitting unit, a uh, very heavy hitting civilization. That being said, speaking of heavy hitting, my goodness, the Gurjaras, can they counter the Spanish if played just right? Primary gold for our Gurjara, by the way, nice and secure in the back. Primary stone off campus and a bit of a forward position. His base also completely open, but unlike our Spaniard, he has a nice small forest, does Mr. Yo, that he can use to bifurcate his defenses to the north and to the south. Whereas our Spaniard, look at this, has to create a massive wall off undertaking here. Oh, almost got the first kill of the game, but decides to back off. Now, the reason I wanted to cast this matchup, I mean, aside from the players, <laughs> is the sieves. Let me know what you think. The Spanish are chronically complained about as being way too strong. That being said, when you have access to Shrivamsha riders that can dodge all projectiles, including gunpowder, doesn't matter if your gunpowder units fire 18% faster. Shrivamshas are lightning quick. They will close the distance. On top of that, your camels deal extra bonus damage to conquistadors, which not a lot of units do. Skirmishers are a good counter to Conquistadors, but you need a lot of them. Their damage output is so low, and the Conquistador damage output is so high. So the Gurjaras actually have a very powerful roster. Like I said, the Spanish, a pristine infantry line. That means Jack Diddley, if our Gurjara in blue gets out Chakram Throwers. We've seen on this channel, you must have seen in your gaming experience, in the matches you've watched just how quickly Chakrams can destroy infantry lines. And look at Blue, look at Mr. Yo using the mobility and speed here of these units, just circling his opponent, not letting Sito have a moment's rest. I mean, he knows that the name of the game for the Spaniards is to go up to Castle, so he's doing his best, I think, to delay that and doing a good job. Both players are in feudal, both players very similar populations, 31 to 32. Although Mr. Yo now uh, is starting to get a bit of a bigger lead. No, right as I finish that sentence, he's actually still just one villager. And gets Viper walled in, though. This is bad. This is bad for Mr. Yo. We'll lose one scout. Brilliant play out of Sito. Absolutely fantastic. At the same time, he's busting into Mr. Yo's base. Take a look at the base that Mr. Yo has carved out for himself. Lots of room in the back to expand. The Gurjaras need that Kshatriya's upgrade. They need that discount on food. Looks like he caught up to the castle here. A castle to the camel and immediately loses his entire army now that the mobility has been stopped by spearmen and scouts. And look at this. Villagers on stone four already in feudal age. Now, unless he's planning on doing a tower rush of sorts, which not a bad idea at all. I mean, how much of his opponent's base has he seen now? Okay, so he's seen the wall off parts. He sees that it's a very big especially over here, very far away from everything. A tower here could be deadly. Or will he go fast castle? I don't know. The Spanish, the Gurjaras, both very versatile civilizations. There are civs in the game, as you guys know, that are kind of pigeonholed into a particular build order or meta, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not going to go cavalry with the Goths. Let's put it like that. Other civilizations are quite versatile. Why did he delete that? I mean, access for the archers, sure, but maybe wait until you actually have some units before you start jeopardizing your structures. That being said, we're in feudal. What, is, what exactly is going to attack these guys? Two spearmen and a scout. Not the damage uh, dealers that he needs to worry about. Look at this. Our Gurjara will be heading up to castle first. Our Spaniard, not even close. Still needs 100 food and a tiny bit of gold. But these are two very versatile civs, which is why I'm keeping my mouth shut. I mean, 
let's put it like this the Grajara needs would do well to try to delay castle as much as possible which i think he did i think mysterio did a fantastic job of that with three cavalry units running circles literally running circles around the town center of sito that that being said sito's game plan needs to be get that get your butt up to castle age and start pushing or maybe even earlier had he gone towers that being said look at his stone miners now eight to the zero of mr yo but with only a two villager lead this is coming at a, at a cost he only has six villagers on gold whereas mr yo has eight and he's only got seven on wood whereas mr yo has 14 we'll see what all of that means stay tuned 24 seconds until castle for our gurjara And look at this, just circling around each other. More wood reveals itself as to why, and we've got six archers now. Will they see the spearman? They see a, a tiny bit of him. They see this one, they close in. They need to be close, otherwise that spearman can move left, right, do dodge all the live long day. Lion will get activated, I'm sure. He knows that, immediately, preemptively guns it down. And what are you? You are a scout that is just trying to get vision of when your opponent is going to attack you. I don't know if Sito wants to engage here. This is a spotting scout, not exactly a damage dealing scout, especially not with six crossbows about to hit his base. A university. So Botkin, both saw this is the play of a archer heavy build as we saw 14 villagers on wood. So our Gurjara going archers. I don't know if you guys can hear the pop, pop, pop of fireworks. It is Canada Day while I'm recording this to all my fellow Canadians. Happy birthday to all our fellow uh, Americans down south. This is our July 4th. We celebrate three days before you guys. But uh, it's a celebration nonetheless. I remember when I lived right downtown, downtown Toronto, like right by the water. I had a balcony. I lived in a condo in a balcony with a view of the CN Tower. And man, would it be beautiful on July 1st. Ballistics. Okay, Mr. Yo very much going ranged units right now. And there we go. The castle's up. Conquistadors are out. I was getting so nostalgic about Canada Day. I missed the completion or even beginning of the castle. But this is exactly where Mr. Yo does not want to be. Look at the damage output, 16 damage. 2.9 firing range is very, very slow compared to the two of these guys, especially on the low ground. No, this is not good for Mr. Yo. But where he lacks strength, he wants to make it up with numbers. 11 crossbows should take out three conquistadors pretty quickly, but loses a scout. Vision gone. Mr. Yo, look at this. He's now in the dark. He doesn't know what the hell is going on. Conquistadors have mobility. They have uh, strength. It is just a much better unit. Discovers the siege workshop. Doesn't know what's inside. We know that it's a mangonel, but look at this. Undeterred, Mr. Yo has no clue whether a mangonel is going to pop out of here in a second and gun him down or at least try. Sticks around, gets some villagers. But now there's five conquistadors. Oh, man. Mr. Yo. This is a, a very risky move here by him because of this. But moving back out at the perfect moment, had he stayed a second later, literally a second, he could have been in trouble with that mangonel. Now he's retreating, gathering his forces, but I'm not sure he wants to engage into a mangonel. That, you know, with that being said, one mangonel versus 13 crossbows. The crossbows take that. I want to point out that these guys also killed the lion. You know, I mean, come on, just a lion. You don't have to kill it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! Sito not paying attention misses a golden opportunity to get a shot off and Mr. Yo with the triple micro. But now he's not paying attention. <laughs> That's so gross. Sito paying attention there, didn't want to gun his own knight down. That was absolutely what Sito needed there after that first disaster of a mangonel that popped out this guy four kills and look at the hp down to a third all it takes is one mangonel shot and that is all she wrote now remember elite skirmishers against cavalry archers plus two 
archer plus four, and I believe conquistadors like Rathas, they have multiple armor base, uh, armor category, or what do you want to call it? Classes. Cavalry makes them susceptible to Gurjara camels, for example. Uh, cavalry archer. Archer makes them susceptible to skirmishers, but again, you need, what, three skirmishers for every conquistador? That's not enough. Four of them are not going to be enough to take on Kongs. I don't even know why uh, Sito is microing this Mr. Yo housed at 75. Is he building another house? No, he's building a market. So he's going to be housed for a little bit here. This is not good. This is not good for our uh, Gurjara. First Shravamsha is getting ready to reveal himself. Okay. So we know Sito wants to bust in here because he's attacking the weaker house. If he was attacking the archer range, I would say maybe he wants to delay production, cause a little bit of a ruckus, but no, he wants to get inside this base and he wants to get inside a yesterday spotting outpost villager, monk, another mangonel, three mangonels. Oh my goodness. He knows. He knows that you can't let the Gurjaras get up and Mr. Yo housed again at 80 and he's not building houses. Look at the supply for our Spaniard. Literally double room. He's at 63, 64. He's got 130 supply room. So our Gurjara currently ahead by about 16, 15 villagers, rather. There's that more expensive Sanctity upgrade. And let's take a look. Okay, I thought he was trying to bust in. Instead, he's taking his time to... Uh, to demolish three houses? Maybe he does maybe he's expecting siege? Yeah, he saw the siege workshop. He didn't want to go into a, a choke point, I guess. These conquistadors are getting wrecked by those uh elite skirmishers. Okay. Our Aztec. Our Aztec. Oh my god, our Gujara. <laughs> For some reason my mind was thinking about the patch with the uh, increased cost of sanctity. And because it's a monk upgrade, for some reason, my brain just went to Aztecs because, you know, warrior monk civilization. Mr. Yo being so annoying. 11 kills on these crossbows. But what do you do on, against this? <gasps> Doubt Castle? Sito wants to end this. We saw this yesterday. We saw the Viper try to do this to Hera. He's down 17 villagers. He has... Equal army supply, and his army supply is much better. Skirmishers against Mangonels. Uh, okay, good luck, good luck, Mangonels. Uh, good luck, Skirmishers. <laughs> Counter Castle going up, though, for our Gurjara, who is yet again housed at 90. Mr. Yo has been housed for the last 5 to 10 minutes. Beautiful Mangonel shots. Needs to get just one more. Maybe bring a Conquistador. Doesn't need it. But Redemption will allow him to at least try to convert. Gets the Mangonel. Go for the monks. Go for the monks. He goes for the monks. He gets two. Beautiful get there by Mr. Yo. The Conquistador is trying their darndest to stop this castle from going up. Let's take a look. 92. No, it's definitely going up. Now he has to back away. Get your butts into the castle. Save yourselves, Mangonel. Get the hell out of the firing range. And the uh, Gurjara elephants are out. Remember, all mounted units deal extra bonus damage. Does that apply to uh, elephants, actually? I don't know if that applies to a siege or armored elephant. Is that technically a mounted unit? Hmm. In any event, let me know in the comments below. Is an armored elephant technically a mounted unit? I mean, it's got cavalry armor. Oh, the castle. The castle's trying to get the uh, Mangonel. Why did he spawn it to the right and not to the left? I mean, look at the uh, the villager count now. It's still 12 ahead, but 12 is a lot smaller than 15. And he's nullifying the town center here. Uh, rather, the town center to the center. These conks need to move around. Their mobility is being seriously underused by Sito. I mean, he's built the perfect army to counter what Mr. Yo has. Again, skirmishers on paper counter conquistadors. But what the paper doesn't recognize is that these guys, again, attack on a 16 against an, a unit that has 6 armor and only 35 HP. Take a look at their HP, 75. 
Oh, horrible pathing. He loses three conquistadors there, or two maybe, for absolutely no reason. Where are you going, Mr. Manganel? Where are you going? You're going after the elephant. But the elephant is just baiting you. Let's compare castle HP 21 to 43. And now, this is where Sito has an opportunity to end the game. I mean, he himself is under attack, but Mr. Yo is focusing on houses like the Viper did yesterday. Sito has a chance here. He's got to get rid of this army. But I'm starting to get worried. This, <laughs> this castle. I mean, repair it. No, he can't repair it. It's underneath a, another castle's firing range. He loses the Conquistador. Ah. <gasps> Mr. Yo! I mean, I, at, at this point, we've seen enough games for Mr. Yo that I, I can call him the master of holds. I mean, I don't think I've seen a player better than him at being able to withstand aggression and then just win a game. Aggression, by the way, that would crack players that are worse, equal, or better. This kind of pressure with a castle drop right in your face, cutting your base in half... I mean, who, who can survive that? But Sito, I think, with uh, with running his Conquistadors, two of them here definitely, I think, died to the town center. This third one, I, I think, died to the skirmishers. I'm not sure. But getting a convert, building more units, his army supply is double. And even though I think, uh, technically, Sito still has the better army supply in terms of the quality of the unit, and he's on the high ground here, I think, yeah. Just a few, a few little issues, but wow, Sito tried his darndest to knock Mr. Yo down, knowing that you can't let the Grujara get his butt up to full strength. And by the way, you can't let the Spanish get their butts up to full strength either. Shravamsha Rider, which I talked a big, uh, big uh, game about, has just been hiding, quaking in his boots inside the stable, just kind of hanging out. Why didn't he release the Shravamsha? Did he forget that he had it? In any event, Sito falling a little bit too far behind economically. And both players are still in castle. Take a look at the score. He's about 25%, 20 to 25% lower score. About to lose his Conquistadors here. I mean, look at their HP. They're down to almost half. Loses one to convert, loses three more. Mr. Yo can keep pumping out these units. These two archery ranges are still around. One of them will go down eventually, but a Conquistador is expensive compared to an elite Skirmisher. A Conquistador is 130 resources total, 70 gold. So he can build four more, assuming he has the food. No, he doesn't even have the food for four more. He can build three more Conquistadors, but they can be built all the way over here. And Mr. Yo is so annoying with these guys. And ultimately, again, the King of Holds manages to hold Mr. Yo, 31 Skirmishers, 20. I mean, the numbers here... The Conquistadors ought to have had their way with these skirmishers. PKPM right at the beginning. PKPM right at the beginning for both players. The economy uh, about, what, 15% better for Mistio? No relics. Game is pretty short. Double the wood. A little bit more food. A little bit more gold. And stone, obviously, for our Spaniard. Let's take a look at kill count. 50 to, 50, 50 to 70, basically. Villager kills 30 to 15. 30 to 16. I'm just being kind of general right now just because uh, it's not exactly a very high kill count <laughs> because it's not exactly a very long game. But strategically, what an exciting game. Our Spaniard really did try to crack him open, inserting this castle. He didn't put the castle here. He didn't put the castle here. He went into the guts. He tried to crack Mr. Yo open like an egg. Unfortunately, I, Mr. Yo just managed to hold on, pump out those elephants, I still am going to look up whether these guys are considered mounted units. Nothing, nothing exactly mounting him. <laughs> but as always in Age of Empires, always fun, these little details. In any event, our Spaniard did his best and what a, what a successful attempt. Getting 20 more kills than his opponent using these tanky units to run circles around. But Mr. Yo, with a bit of a delay here, managed to get up to castle first. Literally running this guy around, running him ragged, manages to hold, and Sito just says, you know what, at this point my castle's about to fall, I, I don't think I can back this up anymore, I only have 420 stone, I've taken my villagers, I mean, how much stone is left here? 
not even enough stone to build a castle. Maybe that's why he decided to GG. Maybe if there was like 230 stone here, he would have continued the pressure. But the only other stone he has is out here exposed, and there are crossbows on the prowl. So Sito tried, failed, decided to live another day by GGing, and Mr. Yo, the king of holds, held once again and takes the big W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.